This week on Let's Tell Schools, we have two celebrities in our midst. Meet the outstanding educators who wear the Teacher of the Year crown. Hello, I'm Mike Loney, the superintendent of schools and the host of Let's Talk Schools. Welcome to another edition of this show. Today, we have two very special guests. Each year, Fulton County Schools recognizes teachers that rise to the top, and they're selected as Teachers of the Year. Well, today, we have two, uh, the 2023-24 school year Teacher of the Year and the 2024-25 Teacher of the Year. I can't wait to dig in, so let's just start. Elise, we're going to start with you. Why don't you introduce yourself? Tell a little bit about your background. Okay. Well, my name is Elise Kreitner, and I was the 23-24 Fulton County Teacher of the Year. Um, I am a special educator and always wanted to be a teacher and was told I couldn't support myself teaching. But that was a lie, because I can. I started in elementary school. I did 10 years at OC Elementary and then six years at Autry Mill Middle School, and it was the greatest time of my life. And what do you do now? You've been promoted since that time. Since that time, I have become an SDI coach here with the county. And now I get the joy of not only teaching, helping the students, I get to help our teachers. You're, the, so, you're a coach of teachers. A coach of teachers. That's right. And I still get to work with the students. So it's the best of both worlds. Thank you so much. Yvette, tell us all about you. You're the current teacher of the year. Yes. Um, my name is Azul Yvette Life, and I am currently a teacher at Sandtown Middle School. And I am will be a seventh grade reading teacher in the fall. Awesome. Can, Yvette, can you tell me thus far, what's the experience? I remember coming to your celebration. Yeah. Um, what has this experience been like thus far? It has been a wonderful experience. It is so humbling and I'm honored. I know that many colleagues have been praising me and have been encouraging me, but I also know that it's going to be a role model part that I need to make sure that I stand out and I also represent the teachers and um, all of the educators here in Fulton County. Absolutely. And I remember when we when we surprised you yes. with the announcement, you had some family members there yes. in the audience. Yes, yes. My BBB, my best brothers ever. Mm. Those are my three brothers. And um, our parents are in heaven now. And um, we are very supportive. And I also have very supportive family, other family members. And Elise, tell me about your experience. You're, you're the outgoing teacher of the year. And so what was that experience like? And, and what can you foreshadow for the current Teacher of the Year, Yvette? Well, it was a wonderful experience, and you are an amazing teacher, and it was such a joy to get to go into your classroom and see you at work. Um, I enjoyed every minute of it. It, it was terrific. It, I, I was talking to some people earlier today, and they agreed with me that all teachers kind of struggle with imposter syndrome. We never feel good enough. We're always striving to be better and better for our students. And so to have the... Um, to have that affirmation that we actually do our job and do our job well really, really meant so much to me. It was incredibly humbling. I heard from people throughout my entire career, and and I know you have too, and it just, it, it blew my mind, honestly. It's, it's been a wonderful experience. It's funny that you mentioned imposter syndrome, because I, I actually, imposter syndrome, I actually believe that it's because teachers are by nature perfectionists. Yes. They understand how important this work is. And they want to get it right for the students. Um, what 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 kind of pressure is that for you, Yvette, to to know that uh, your your job is life changing for students, and and that you want to get it right? Talk to us about the pressures of of that. Well, some of the pressures is you want to make sure that the students know that we make mistakes too, but at the same time that we have to make sure that we do our research because even our parents, who are our greatest supporters, and also our other colleagues they want to make sure that we support the students as well. So we have to make sure that we stay educated. And with the different professional learning that we have here, the PDs and things that we have here in Fulston, that is what is making it possible. Good deal. So let me ask you this. We, every year we hire hundreds of new teachers right. and we're embarking on the 24, 25 school year. We're right in the middle of it. So what advice would you give? Uh, and, and I'm going to start with you, Elise. What advice would you give to somebody new to the team? Whether they're new to the profession or not, uh, what, what advice would you, how do you get acclimated in Fulton County Schools? Well, I think it's pretty easy to get acclimated in Fulton County Schools. Um, I think we're a very welcoming team and there's a lot, a lot of um, 
different trainings and ways to be welcomed in. And I, I feel like the buildings that I've gone to have been incredibly welcoming. But I think there are two really important things that teachers need to do. Uh, and I don't know which one would be first. For me, first would have to be loving the students. I feel like you have got to find a way to connect and make relationships with those students um, and let them know that you believe in them and that there is a way we can get through this together. And then I think the other piece that teachers really need is self-care. And I, I know that's not something that we all practice as much as we need to. Um, but there are going to be times when we're exhausted. At the beginning of the year, we're running, 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 doing, 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 especially. And I think you need to say to, my, to yourself, I've got to take a few minutes for me, whatever that means, if that's working out or getting a little extra sleep or going and getting a Starbucks or talking to a friend, working with a colleague, whatever it is you need to do for yourself that that helps you get that that peace of mind. That's really important. Absolutely agree with you. My, my routine is I get up early in the morning to go work out. But I will tell you, we were talking before the show and this young lady gets up at two thirty in the morning a little to work out. So but but the point is, self-care is incredibly yeah. important in this very highly charged highly complex, a highly important profession. You've mm -hmm. got to take care of yourself because if you don't, other people certainly won't, right? Absolutely. So let me ask you this. Um, I know that you've worked alongside some great teachers before. Do you have a teacher that comes to your mind that really kind of put the fire in you to become an educator and more than, more than that, to become a teacher of the year? Wow. Um, I'd like to say my first grade teacher, Ms. Duncan, um, I was just so impressed. I wanted to be her. Um, she was so exciting. She made teaching and, and educating, just being learning fun for everyone. And I just noticed that one time when we were in our reading groups, that's maybe why I love reading so much. She pulled me to the back and said, you're being moved to the Bluebirds. That was a big deal for me because I knew that was the highest reading group. And I don't know what part that I did, but I know that my parents always had materials at home. We always had magazines. We always read the newspaper together. So I always had a love for reading. So when that move made, that just that made a difference because that means that she believed in me. And that made my difference with being an educator. Do you have a similar story? Do you have somebody that inspired you to follow this career path? I had so many amazing teachers um, that I was going back over them first grade, second grade. They're, I mean, amazing, amazing teachers. Um, and I can name most of them now that I'm getting a little older. It's getting a little harder, but I can see their faces. I was blessed. I had glorious teachers. And I went the path of education. It inspired me. That's what I wanted. I knew from a very young age that's what I wanted to be because of that. their role models. My sister did not have this, a similar experience. She had, at 15 months younger, had a very unusual experience with teachers, and it really changed her life, and she did not enjoy education. And uh, and it's been it's been a life-changing thing for me. You know, I went straight through graduate school mm -hmm. and, and knew this is where I was supposed to be. And um, God, they're, they're just the most amazing people. I'm seeing them all. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I, ha I have that experience too. Of course, I didn't go straight into the education, but I had a teacher um, that really profoundly impacted my outlook in life. And, um, you know, I, I remember a lot of my teachers, but I don't remember how well they knew their content or their yeah. subject matter. I remember how they made me as a student feel. And in Fulton County Schools, one of the things that we've been focused on for years, since at least since I've been here, is how important it is to have strong, professional, caring relationships with our students. So as an educator, where we're being pushed in so many different directions to meet the standards, uh, you know, the assessments coming. How do we continue to focus on relationship building um, in, this, in this work? Yvette? One of the things is just making sure that you're compassionate because you have to be compassionate and also empathetic. You want, even now in middle school, you have students come in. I have students come to me early in the morning. They're sharing, you know, things that they want, need, may, may need help along as far as going to a counselor or just may want to share. Many times students are very quiet and they're not very receptive, but when you give them that loving feeling, they feel comfortable being around you and they also are comfortable learning from you. And, and what about you, Elise? So one of the things that I like to do, my students always had outside activities that were really important to them. And that might be a place that they would tend to shine, whereas maybe in the classroom they weren't shining. And they would say, Miss Kay, can you come see me do wrestling? Or can you come see me play football? Or can you... Whatever it was, I really made the effort to at least get there so that they saw me in the stands and they knew that I was there supporting them when they were shining so that we could work together when they were in the classroom. And 
and and that has been such a gift to me these relationships with these students that are still checking in with me today and telling me how they're doing in the future i have a couple of future doctors and i have a couple of um, pharmacists and these are students who struggled in, in special education in their early years and and look at them now so yay fulton county <laughs> yeah that's right yeah. <laughs> yay that so i have another question and, and you're, you're about to experience this because you're going into the fall as this current teacher of the year um, so this, I guess, this is geared more towards you. A lot of people don't know this, but one of the one of the tasks of the teachers of the year uh, from every school is to serve on the superintendent's advisory committee. And so you you write you have a responsibility now to represent your colleagues and the way you carry yourself and your professionalism and your and your continuous learning. But you also become the voice of your colleagues in the superintendent's advisory committee, we meet on a monthly basis okay. and we talk about potential decisions moving forward. We get feedback. Talk to us about what that experience was for you. Um, and, and do you think it was beneficial for the teachers of the year from all school? Oh, I think it was a really important uh, place to get information. We heard, we, you will hear information that you would never have been privy to until much later in the game. And, and we were able to give you feedback um, and, and that helped make decisions as far as i felt like we were very heard um i thought it was a great experience um teachers felt heard like they had a, a part to say in the decision making and you know that's that's an important thing to feel like we are actually heard and that we have some information to share so that was great well i i find a lot of value you know we've got thirteen thousand employees so it's hard to get input right from everybody but the teachers of the year serve as a representative group of teachers um, who come from all schools, and every, every school is represented. And once again, it's about giving voice to teachers, but also about me learning. Mm -hmm. I haven't been in the classroom full time in a bit. Right. Um, and so hearing the feedback and the perspective of teachers that are currently in the classroom and what y'all are going through, the, the struggles, uh, the, um, you know, the challenges, and some of the rewards of being a teacher, um, it's, it's really refreshing for me. So thank you both. For that and thanks to all of our other teachers of the year so you're going to enjoy being teacher of the year this year yes sir. um and then you're going to pass the baton to someone else um i know when when i was in the classroom people were reluctant to accept the nomination of teacher of the year because it does require some additional work right you have to fill an application you have to go through the interview process um is is the effort worth the reward to become teacher of the year and i'll start with you and then you bet i'll come to you uh, yes. And early in my career, I was nominated for Teacher of the Year, and I was very reluctant to go through the process. Um, and my assistant principal said I needed to think about my why and what I would tell my children. Would I, would I tell them to deny the, the chance to go for it? So um, I was nominated three times, and uh, third, charm, third time was the charm, right? Is that what they say? Um, and went through the process. And, and it is a very stressful process. Um, but I think I learned a lot of really important skills that I that I needed to have in order to be a better person, a better teacher. Um, I, I think it was a really good experience to go through. Terrifying in some ways. Um, when there are more people looking at you in your classroom than there are students in your room, <laughs> <laughs> that's when you kind of go, wow, uh, and your students go, wow. But it was a great, great learning experience. And Yvette, what about you? Well, this is my fourth time being teacher up here. So but this is this is not new for you. I was thinking that, you know, maybe this is where we need to keep going and just keep pushing and see what happens from here. I know that it's very, as a teacher, sometimes you're thinking, what is it about you that makes you special? And sometimes it's difficult to celebrate yourself, but sometimes you just have to keep encouraging and saying, let's just keep moving. Let's see what happens. And maybe I need to be a voice for other teachers. Okay. Well, I'm going to do something very risky here. Okay. Uh -uh. I'm going to ask you to tell us how we can, the district, me as your superintendent, how can we lean on and learn from Teachers of the Year more? Dream big, like what, what else can we do to make sure that your leadership, your experiences is not only rewarded and recognized, but also utilized for the benefit of the district? Anybody, mm -hmm. anyone? I just wanna make sure that, because I'm um, concerned about teacher retention, I've noticed that over the years, I know I want people to realize that teaching can be fun. When you have supportive parents, teaching is easy. When you have students who are motivated, teaching is easy. 
but when you also have someone who supports you, your leadership team, your administration, and also mentoring, that is a big part of making sure that you can become the best teacher you can be. Sound advice, Elise. I think that's I think that's really great advice too. I was trying because we tend to have an issue with special education teachers. I think the burnout in teaching or in any kind of caring field can be really a large group of people that would leave every year and retention is important. I think continuing to listen, continuing to ask us for our uh, opinions. I know that you have put out a lot of um, questionnaires asking us, what do we think about the calendar? What do we think? And listening to what our suggestions are. I know you say, I can't, I can't make magic happen. I can't make days come that don't come. You know what I mean? We, we have to work within a, a system, but knowing that you're listening to us is very, really helpful. Well, thank y'all for your advice. Thank you so much for your leadership. Once again, congratulations for being selected as Teacher of the Year for your, in your case, the fourth time. So I have one more question be before we come to a close. I know that we honor our Teachers of the Year in a, in a banquet in, in, a, in the Legacy Awards. So talk to us about that experience. Um, what was that like? Did it meet your expectations? And Yvette, I'm going to start with you. Okay. Well, I know that legacy is important because family is important to me. So when we think about roots and as being teachers, being a legacy means that you are carrying on a torch that you have had others have had before you. So it's almost bringing in new talent, new experiences, new types of things that you can spread on and share with other teachers. So I'm excited about that legacy. And what about you, Elise? Well, that, um, I don't want to give away any surprises because it is the most beautiful right. <laughs> award ceremony you will ever experience in your life. Um, some, some big surprises of people who rah-rah you and celebrate you. Uh, it's a gorgeous celebration. Um, there is not a way that a person could walk out of that, that experience and not feel celebrated. Um, it's exciting. It's and it's beautiful. It's special. I'm glad I get to go back another year and I get to celebrate you. Um, it's 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 just magical. And I do think that everybody felt celebrated. Um, you're going to love it. Well, our media crew has a couple of Emmys, but that's our version <laughs> of the Academy Awards and the Emmys yeah. all combined, yeah. celebrating our Teachers of the Year. Yeah. Thank you so much Thank for your you. input today. Um, you are exemplars in a district full of fantastic educators, and I'm so humbled and thankful to be working with you. Folks, thank you for joining another edition of Let's Talk Schools. You heard it right here from Teachers of the Year. And now, let's go around the district in 90 seconds. That's it for our show this week. Let's keep this conversation going. We'd love to hear from you on our social media platforms. Join us next time on Let's Talk Schools, and thank you for watching.